What's up guys, it's Eric from LED Grow Lights Depot here with a review for the Grow Light Science Grow 300 LED Grow Light, released late 2019 and updated in November 2020. Stay tuned for a full review, part testing, and my final thoughts on this fixture. A quick note, the info and specifications that I cover in this review will mostly be for a single Grow 300, unless otherwise stated. The video being shot and the PAR testing will be for two GROW 300 since they are in a 4x4 tent and this is a recommended number of fixtures for this size space. As of early March 2021, GROW Light Science makes two different LED GROW lights, the GROW 200 and the GROW 300. The GROW 200 is the little brother of the GROW 300. It is used for smaller spaces such as a 2x3 area as it draws just over 200 watts. I won't be covering the GROW 200 in this review. The differences between the GROW 200 and 300 are the size of the fixture, the light output, water straw, and coverage area. The diodes, spectrum, drivers, and warranty are the same. Let's delve further into the GROW 300 and first talk about its build. The fixture's dimensions are 46.1 by 12.6 by 2.9 inches and it weighs 14.2 pounds. It's an elongated light similar to the Electric Sky series by the Green Sunshine Company. The bottom of the Grow 300 contains four equally spaced, conformally coated LED strips that run from one end to the other end of the unit. The drivers are integrated into the fixture, not removable, and have a 50,000 hour lifetime and five year warranty. All grow light science fixtures come standard with a built-in dimming knob, dimmable to 10%, which gives you complete control of the light output at different stages of growth. All of these components are held together on a sturdy metal casing. To create the GLS high red spectrum, grow light science uses 1056 top bin Samsung and Osram Oslin Square Hyper Red Gen 3 LEDs on the Grow 300. These are the latest Osram diodes and pack a huge punch at 5.66 micromoles per second and 4.0 micromoles per joule. Notice the huge bump in red in the spectrum. This is a bit similar to Chilled's Growcraft flowering spectrum or the Green Sunshine Company's Electric Sky spectrum. Expect a coloring rendering index of 90. For visual purposes, this means that your plants will look pretty natural under this light compared to how plants look under blurple light. Grow Light Science only uses 15% blue in their spectrum, which has been shown in studies to be enough to reduce stem elongation. This is different from many other brands that use fewer red diodes and therefore have a higher proportion of blue in the spectrum. You won't find UV in the high red spectrum, but as I always note, there is some far red present in the spectrum from the white diodes. If you want UV, you can always use a supplemental UV light. This spectrum can be used for seedling to harvest growth. I recommend using the dimmer to dim the light down to around 50% for seedlings, clones, and veg, and then turning up the intensity to 100% for flowering. Based on the high red light in the spectrum, this light will excel in flower. The total light output of the fixture is 884 micromoles per second with a PAR efficacy of 2.75 micromoles per joule as measured in an integrating sphere. A single grow 300 will cover a 2x4 to 2.5x5 foot area for flowering. Two lights will cover a 4x4 to 5x5 area for flowering. The light should be hung 12 to 18 inches above the canopy during flowering for the best results. If vegging, you can hang these lights 18 to 24 inches above the canopy or keep them at a lower height and dim them down. The Grow 300 draws 321 watts at the wall and 2.68 amps at 120 volts according to Grow Light Sciences specs. I measured the water's draw at the wall with a kilowatt meter. At 118 volts, I received a reading of 322 watts with an amperage of 2.73. Expect an amperage of 1.37 at around 240 volts. Dimmed all the way down to 10%, the fixture drew 26.9 watts and 0.5 amps. The Grow 300 is rated for 120 volt and 240 volt applications. The fixture comes with a NEMA 515P 120 volt style plug. A NEMA 615P 240 volt plug adapter can be supplied on request. If your country uses a different style plug, you'll need to use a plug adapter. Expect a heat output of 1094 BTUs per hour from a single fixture or 2189 BTUs from two fixtures. That's 35% less heat than a 1000 watt HID fixture. The thermal management on the Grow 300 is excellent, especially compared to fixtures with denser diode configurations. 
so expect a long diode lifetime. Growlight Sciences Operations, Engineering, and Customer Service is based in Detroit, USA. The lights are ETL certified, come with a 5-year manufacturer's warranty, 120-day return window, and can be used for both home and commercial grows. Growlight Science took some good par readings of their fixtures in different size spaces with reflective walls and a dark floor. I'm going to show them here, so feel free to pause the video if you want a closer look. The different size areas were 2.5 by 5, 5 by 5, 2 by 4, and 4 by 4. Notice the lower par readings in the 5 foot wide areas compared to the 4 foot wide areas, yet the readings are still very good. However, the 2x4 and 4x4 areas had the highest, most uniform readings. Here are my par readings that I took of two Grow 300s in a 4x4 Gorilla Grow tent. Since there's a reflective floor in this 4x4 tent, the readings might be a bit different compared to their 4x4 readings. Alright, the first reading is going to be at 36 inches, where we're getting about 812 ppfd. And now moving to the back edge. about 690 and into the corner yeah, right around 615 and then to the other edge about 715 so this would be a good height for vegging technically you could uh, dim the light down or raise the light a little bit higher for veg since this is a pretty high intensity for veg um, this also shows you the penetration you'd be getting at 36 inches and the next reading's at 24 inches, where we're hitting over 1,000 ppfd in the middle. And as I move it to the back, you can see that that's going to hold until we get to the back edge, where it drops to around 860. And into the corner, about 746. And the other edge, just about 900. All right, so it's great that we're seeing, you know, um, over a thousand PPFD in most places here. Um, as we move to the back and edges, that's going to drop off. So this would be a fine height for flowering at. Um, I'll show you that you can also move it quite a bit closer, and you're going to get some better intensity. But at this height, you're getting a good balance between intensity and uniformity. All right. Now 18 inches, about just over 1200 ppfd, moving to the back, about 935, and into the corner, just under 800. And the other edge, 980. So this would be the ideal height for flowering. Notice that you're getting really good uniformity from the middle, and as we move uh, the meter back that intensity is holding about even and then of course as you get to the edges and corners that's dropping off but overall this would be the recommended height for flowering and the last reading is going to be at 12 inches so notice the high ppfd here but as we move to the back watch how that increases and that's because we're going directly underneath the light. Keep in mind that there's two lights in here. So 736. And then into the corner. About 750. And this other edge. This is pretty high, about 1120. And that's because the lights are closer to the meter. So just to summarize, for most growers, the sweet spot is 18 inches above your plants. For growers that want to push their uh, plants a little bit harder, somewhere between 12 and 18 inches is ideal. Let's sum this review up with my thoughts on the Grow 300. I must say that the specs on this light are really good and certainly competitive with many other brands on the market. An 884 micromole per second light output 2.75 micromole per joule par efficacy, and a 321 watt power draw, all for a price of 419 US dollars. Assuming you want to cover a 4x4 or 5x5 area with two lights, you're looking at 1,768 micromoles per second of light output, and a 642 watt power draw, 
at only $838. This light output for two fixtures is over the 1700 micromole per second light output that popular bar style fixtures emit, such as the Gavita 1700E or Fluence Spider 2i, yet it is 30% to 45% of the cost. At this low price point, you're still getting top bin Samsung and Osram diodes and reliable drivers in the Grow 300, so you're not sacrificing quality when you use these lights. You're just paying a lot less. Check out this chart that compares grow light science fixtures price per unit of light output to other popular LED grow lights on the market. You can see that these fixtures really do have one of the lowest costs, even less than Mars Hydro and Spider Farmer, which I consider popular budget LEDs. Basically, you are not overpaying for light and you're getting a good quality product. The PPFD on this light looks really good in its respective coverage area, whether that is one light in a 2x4 or two lights in a 4x4. Not only are the PAR readings all above 1000 micromoles per second in a 2x4 or 4x4 reflective area, but the uniformity is outstanding. The high red spectrum is quite different from most other lights on the market. I mean, there really is a lot of red in the spectrum, so expect excellent flowering results. Growlight Science really prides themselves on the high number of red diodes, indicating that this is key to productive photosynthesis and excellent flowering results. I like that the light is designed and engineered in the USA and that Growlight Science has a solid five-year warranty and very generous 120-day return policy. Not many other brands can say the same. They have excellent after-sales support if needed and won't leave you high and dry if you have any product issues. We have always had a good relationship with them and they were willing to go above and beyond for us and our customers. As far as the downsides of the Grow 300, there are a couple that stand out. First, you need two lights to cover a 4x4 or 5x5 area. Therefore, you need twice the amount of lights to cover what most other large bar style fixtures will cover. The upside of this is that the Grow 300 footprint is modular and flexible, so if you have a grow space that doesn't allow complete 4x4 sections, you can create the light footprint that works for you. You also get really good uniformity with this type of layout. Second, the light is not currently designed to integrate with a controller, however this could change in the near future. There's a link to the product page for the Grow 300 in the description if you want to learn more or purchase this fixture. These lights ship for free in the lower 48 states with no tax in the USA. There's also stock up in Canada and they can be shipped for free to Canadians, minus duties and taxes. Hit the like button and subscribe to be notified about more videos like this reviewing popular LED lights. And check out our other LED grow light reviews on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram at LED Grow Lights Depot for giveaways, sales, and other great content. Link below. See you later.